Well, thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how I roast a chicken with a really good sauce that's easy to make, only takes a matter of five minutes if you have everything together, and it's going to be quite tasty. Right now it's orange season in Florida, Valencia oranges, which are juice oranges, so I thought, oh, what could I do with a chicken that has an orange kind of a sauce. So this Cumberland sauce is something that I used to use on rock Cornish game hens all the time in the catering days. I love Cornish game hens. Nice, cute little one pounders. Anyway, the Cumberland sauce is quite tasty. So what you're going to do is make the Cumberland sauce in advance and then we baste it with the chicken and, and it's quite tasty. So let's get started. To start this, what you do is you thin slice a shallot. No fancy knife skills needed. Just slice a shallot, put it into a saucepan that will hold two to three cups, doesn't have to be a real big one, to which you're going to add a little bit of olive oil because I happen to have it. It's easy and I always keep it on my counter. And we're going to slowly soften the shallot so that the flavor comes out of it and you want to brown it slightly adds a lot of flavor while that's softening you can start the peeling of the orange and lemons i have a little stripper a zest stripper and it makes a nice long thin strip of peel no pith just the peel it's really a wonderful gadget i love it so we want the peel of an orange or two if you happen to have two and of a lemon after it's after the shallots are softened you're going to add a little bit of cream sherry or it could be sweet marsala or port or any anything like that a madeira would be good and then you're going to add a teaspoon of dry mustard a half a teaspoon of ground ginger i happen to have Frank's hot sauce, but if you have Tabasco, that would work. Just be careful. Then I happen to have grape jam instead of currant, which the original recipe called for, because I made some grape jam last season when Concord grapes were around. Worked out just fine. Or you could, if you don't have the currant, and if you don't have any grape, you could also add some orange marmalade. That would be really good too. And then you stir that up really well then finish your peel and make sure all of your peel goes to the pan because that's going to add some oils from the peel itself to add flavor. And then what you do, don't throw the oranges or lemons out, make sure that you save them because you're going to put them through a press for the juice. The juice of a lemon, which should be about oh two to three tablespoons, make sure you roll the lemon first before you press it so that you get all the juice out. And then the juice of a solid orange, it usually takes about two, but if you only have one, that works. I had a couple of oranges, but I didn't have quite have enough of the half a cup of orange juice. So after pressing the oranges both ways, I flip them over because I don't like to waste anything. And then, I added a little bit of fresh orange juice that I got at the store because right now there should be a boatload of fresh orange juice available at the store. I'm not wild about the concentrate for this one because there's such a difference in flavor. Anyway, then you want to reduce it until it's thick like a heavy cream kind of a thick. And after that reduces, then you can set it aside. Taste adjust it. Might need a little bit more salt, maybe not. Then let's start the chicken. So it's an air chilled chicken, which is really good. No retained water, actually chemicals. And you want to pat it dry because you want a crispy skin on this. So pat it dry really well, top and the bottom. Crispy skin's where it's at. And then what we're going to do, and I'm working on the counter on a piece of waxed paper so that I don't have a completely trash kitchen, it's easy. And then we are going to salt and fresh cracked pepper the chicken on the bottom 
and also on the top. And you want to salt and pepper it really well because you're going to be seasoning the meat of the three and a half pound chicken. Don't be afraid, you won't be over salting it for sure. But pat it in and rub it around. You want to make sure that you get the sides of the thighs and the sides of the legs and then the entire breast and season the wings so that it all has flavor when this is done roasting. So after you have the salt and pepper on on both sides, then just take your hand and kind of pat it around and rub it around. Then take about a two and a half foot piece of cotton twine, wrap it around the legs one way and then the opposite direction. Then you pull them up to the middle. You're trussing the chicken. You want to compact this thing and pull it tight so the legs are crossed. Then you're going to pull the twine in back of the legs and the thigh, flip the chicken over, and you're going to pull that twine really tight back to the neck, crossing it over, then to the other side of the chicken, to the Pope's nose, and under, and then over, and then tie it. And the way you can keep the twine from twisting is double wrap it before you pull it tight and then trim it up and it's done but the object is again to have a nice compact chicken so it cooks even then pull the breast up where you can push the legs and the thighs down and under to make sure it's a nice little compact um, parcel and fold the wings over and in the pan it goes. And how simple is that? So after the chicken's in the pan, I'm using a saute pan because I want to put it on the heat to make the sauce with. I am cutting a couple of oranges, cut the ends off and then quartering them and they're gonna go in the pan to roast with the chicken. It's gonna add a lot of flavor and oven roasted oranges with this Cumberland sauce over it are just so good. So put those in and another nice compliment to the oranges is also carrots going with an orange theme. Cut the carrots, they're usually longer, cut them in half and I like the these the longer carrots. I like the longer carrots as opposed to the little uniform ones, they're kind of weird. Anyway, you've never seen a carrot grow like that. But then take the sauce and baste the chicken, cover the breast, the legs, the thighs, the wings, and drizzle some of the sauce over the carrots and the orange too. Because this is going to add some roasting liquid and it's also going to make that skin come out really good and it's going to add an unbelievable amount of flavor. So after the chicken is completely coated in the sauce, it'll probably take about half of the sauce, then it's oven ready. So it's going to go to a 400 oven for about an hour to an hour and a half, depends on how big that chicken is. I drizzle it with a little extra olive oil and then after it's been in the oven for about a half hour, I pull it out and I start basting it. Tip the pan and use the juices from the bottom part of the pan to the top part of the chicken so that it runs down and then it's also cleaning the pan and it's helping to thicken that sauce a little bit. You're going to have to do it a few times, but you want to baste the vegetables and baste the chicken oh, for a good couple of minutes and then it'll go back to the oven. Look, starts to look pretty good, doesn't it? So it goes back to the oven for, like I say, about another half hour, 45 minutes. While that's finishing, I thought, let's make some rice. Rice is perfect with this. I'm gonna, we're gonna do rice and broccoli. I like to saute it first. I'm not gonna add too much flavor to it, though you could. You could add the zest of an orange or a lemon, whatever you want but I'm going to saute it a little bit just till it turns a little bit golden because that'll add a nice nutty flavor. Just about a tablespoon of oil, that's it. We're going to salt 
the rice and we're going to grind some fresh pepper on it. And then we're going to add the liquid, which is, um, depending on how much rice you're doing, two to one for long grain rice. I'm adding chicken base instead of stock because I didn't happen to have any stock. Having said that, about a tablespoon of chicken base to the liquid and then just stir it around to make sure that the base dissolves. It's a nice simple way if you don't happen to have chicken stock all the time in your refrigerator and that will add a little bit of flavor to complement the chicken. So after it stirs around and the base is dissolved then it goes to the stove top covered simmered for about 15 minutes now after about 15 minutes I'm stirring it up because what I want to do is add some frozen broccoli that I just happen to have broccoli orange chicken sounded like a good combo to me and stir the frozen broccoli and it's only going to take about another five seven minutes to finish that because broccoli's already blanched pretty much cooked so the extra five minutes with a little bit of additional liquid in the pan will finish cooking that rice and it'll come out nice and hot and it's just an easy way to do it you don't have to blanch or cook the broccoli first now what we're going to do since the chicken is done we're going to baste it again and the you'll find that the uh, cooking sauce will have evaporated a little bit but that's okay just add a little bit of water and then start basting again tilt the pan and get the liquid go from the front where you're getting the liquid to the back of the chicken move stuff around and get the edges of the pan so you get all that flavor off of there and what you're gonna have is this wonderfully beautifully basted chicken with some heavenly sauce it's just really good it'll take a few minutes to do that but it's well worth it because that's where all the flavor is coming from entire chicken take a little bit of time but it's really good take the carrots out of the pan or whatever happens to be in your way snip the twine and see if you can take it out if not at least push it aside and then the way to tell if the chickens done wiggle the leg in the socket if it wiggles easy it's done and what you want to do assuming it's done which it probably is take the knife and cut through the leg joint where it meets the thigh if you let your knife do the work you'll figure that out and after you get the leg out then you will cut the thigh off that's pretty easy after that one go all the way down to the pan and I like to take the leg off of both sides so that well one my dog really likes chicken legs that's her little treat seat for dinner and it makes the breast easier to carve now if you haven't already taken the skin off and eaten it cut through and put that skin aside you definitely don't want to waste that skin because it's got all those wonderful caramelized sauce juices on it and it's really tasty and carve off a couple pieces of the chicken that are going to your warm serving pieces and then you're going to take out more of the carrots or the um, roasted oranges and then put some rice in the serving piece because that makes for an easy one serving piece dinner put it on the table and share it with somebody that you really like whether that's your family or friends and that makes dinner quite easy leftovers are wonderful absolutely heavenly baste it with a little sauce before you serve it of which you should have plenty left over and then dinner served doesn't that look wonderful oh my gosh it's just heavenly I'll tell you what it was a good dinner I hope you try that and make sure to leave comments for me and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because I update quite frequently on my channel with foods that you might want to learn how to cook. You too can cook like you owned a restaurant. I'll make it really easy for you. So thanks for joining me and see you on the next episode.